You ready, Mace? Party people in the place to be. Uh -huh. It's about that time for us to... Ah! Yeah. Yeah. What's up, chiropractors? This is Dr. Nick Silveri, your guide up the mountain to a million dollar practice. If you're looking for the roadmap to grow your practice fast, then keep on listening. This is the Path to a Million podcast where I chat with today's most successful practicing chiropractors. And remember, if you want to get there faster, visit GetMeMoreNewPatients.com to find out more about Leverage Media, the most comprehensive digital marketing agency for chiropractors on the planet. What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Nick with Leverage Media. Uh, we are on another episode of Path to a Million podcast, and we are here with my mentor, my coach, uh, my friend, Dane Donahue, uh, owner well, of Who's mentoring who here? Seriously. You, know, you I've always. Learned, <laughs> always. <laughs> so much from you. <laughs> um, so Dane owns Eight Weeks to Wellness, uh, but on today's episode, we're going to be talking to uh, him about his practice, the Wellness Solutions Center um, right outside of Philadelphia. And uh, Dane, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Nick. I'm excited to be here and excited to share everything I've learned in my 28 years. Maybe not everything, but right. a lot of what I've learned in my 28 years. Awesome, man. So Dane has a, uh, a large practice. Um, he how, how long have you had that practice? Uh, I started that practice in 1994. Okay. And, uh, and it is now at kind of like what level um, collection-wise? So collection-wise, we're at about a million and a half. Yeah. Uh, at, at one point, we're about a little bit, little bit over two million okay. for a while. And then um, as I as Eight Weeks to Wellness grew, which is my secondary business, yep. uh, we have associates in there now running the business. So I'm not full-time in my practice. I practice about 12 hours a week, me personally. Yep. My associates run the practice. Um, so that's where we are. Awesome. And uh, actually, before we get into that, give us, you know, for people that don't know you, uh, give us like a 30 second uh, sure. kind of rundown of, of yeah, who you so are. And I great grew, you. grew up in a chiropractic family, you know, dad, uncles, grandfather, you know, a lot of my twin sister, a lot of family members just fell in love with chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got out of school in 1991. I started practicing with my uncle for about two years. Then I opened my own practice in the town that I wanted to live in. Yeah. Uh, and then that morphed into actually buying our family's practice. Brought my sister in who had graduated chiropractic college. And, you know, basically we said, Nick, is like, if we're going to do this for the next 30 or 40 years, we really want to be excited about going to the office. And, you know, we viewed chiropractic as a lifestyle, right. not just as a technique or an adjustment. Yeah. So we wanted to, at the time I had, was like, I think the second class to go through James Chestnut's wellness certification program and just kind of fell in love with the lifestyle aspect of chiropractic. Yeah. You know, I was the athlete myself, you know, took good care of myself. I saw what lifestyle did because, you know, I, growing up in a chiropractic family, you know, you don't go to the doctor, you know, you, you eat healthy food. It's just kind of the naturally way, the way we lived. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to try to create a system to teach people to live that chiropractic lifestyle. Yeah. So how do you, on a regular basis, get adjusted, exercise properly, eat the right food, you know, uh, use your mind properly. And, and how does that in, influence your physiology and your overall health? And so we created Eight Weeks to Wellness. Our practice absolutely exploded. I think we launched it in 2003. We were collecting about 850,000 at the time, which was a good practice for my sister and I. Yep. We were re really comfortable, but we grew to about 2.2 million in about three years. Wow. Outgrew our office, bought a new building. Uh, where we are now, we got about 10,000 square feet of building that we own. Uh, and yeah, so that's what we did. Yeah, I, so uh, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, I am a Eight Weeks to Wellness practice. I've been doing it for uh, a little over, I think right around five years now. And uh, the thing that really resonated with me, uh, I, I had started my practice as a creating wellness center because mm -hmm. I, I loved the idea of doing more than just chiropractic. Like right. I wanted the lifestyle piece in there because we had, you know, we have all these people that we, that we can get them out of pain, but if they're 50 pounds overweight, if they're eating terrible food, if they're smoking, like they're, they're just not going to get healthy. I mean, you're just going to keep fixing the same things over and over again. Um, creating wellness though, the only problem was that there, it, it was more advice. It was like, I would right. tell them what they should go do instead of holding them accountable within the practice. And so when I found eight weeks to wellness, that was, and my practice did the same thing where we grew, um, we grew from two fifty to seven fifty a year in the span of three years. And the majority of that came from the eight weeks to wellness growth. Um, so when you, when you add in, obviously eight weeks of wellness is, is, you know, you've got more staff, you've got, uh, you know, more going on in the practice, you're offering more. What was it that allowed you to have that 
that significant uh, growth within the practice um, going from that 800 to 2 million? You know, I think it was uh, the big thing, Nick, it was being able to offer more to patients. Right. So, you know, and, and I remember reading this and I forget what book I read it in. I think it was good to great. Um, but one of the books that I read about the Walgreens store yep. and, uh, you know, the Walgreens stores, they started off as a, you know, as, as a pharmacy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, providing pharmaceuticals to, to people in the community. And they recognized that when people were going there, they were waiting for their prescription to be filled. You know, they could sell them, uh, you know, photo delivery. You know, they could sell them, you know, toiletries. Yeah. So they had them kind of captured attention. So why not be able to sell them other things? Yeah. So their price per visit went way up mm -hmm. because not only did they buy their drugs, but they were buying toilet paper and they were getting. They were going to buy somewhere. Yeah, they were right? going to buy somewhere. They're, they're going to spend that money somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And once I read that, I'm like, you know, people want these services. Yep. And they want a coach to help coach them through these services, mm -hmm. right? And they need these services. Yep. So, you know, we always say, give them what they want, show them what they could have. Yeah. But a lot of times I th feel like chiropractors are showing them what they could have and then allow them, allowing them to go out and buy those services somewhere else yeah. where there is no coaching, there's no organization to it. Yeah. So I think that what it really enabled us is to be able to offer the nutrition and the exercise. As you know, we offer the functional training in office yeah. and we also charge for it at a profit. You know, so we have, um, you know, patients coming in doing two, three services. They're, you know, monthly, uh, they go from eight weeks to wellness into a monthly fitness membership. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they're purchasing their fish oils, probiotics, vitamin D on a monthly basis, you know, from our website. So we just have a higher OVA, you know, than the traditional. We have, you know, we've done the um, kind of the research. We average about three times the OVA as the average chiropractic office. Yeah. So the, um, in terms of the 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 exercise, the nutrition, um, the massage, and some some offices, um, you know that comes with with more employees. Um, do you talk to me a little bit about like adding on those new employees, but but like really having them as a profit center? Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're just adjusting, the only other staff that you have are going to be you know non-producing employees that are helping you know run the practice. But with with the eight weeks of wellness model. The thing I like about it is like the employees that you hire now become an extra revenue stream. Right. So I, I always liken it, um, Nick, to a football team. Mm -hmm. You know, you have uh, multiple people that have multiple responsibilities. Yeah. You know, so the tight end doesn't have the same job as the center. Very different job. Right. But they're all productive in terms of creating a, a winning offensive or defensive team. Yeah. Right. So the defensive tackle doesn't do the job uh, as the safety or the cornerback. Yeah. Different jobs. Right. But they're all important. Yeah. Right. And so we have kind of the team, but the thing is there's a quarterback, right? And the quarterback is always going to be the one to call the play, yeah. right? So when they huddle up, they know the center isn't calling the play. It's, mm -hmm. it's the quarterback calling right. the play. Right. And so we're the quarterback as the chiropractor. So for example, we don't 1099 our employees. They're, they're, or, well, they're not employees. We don't have independent contractors. Right. They're employees of the business. So yeah. our massage therapist, our trainer, our nutritionist, they're all employees of our business. Because we want to be, I want to be the quarterback. Yeah. I want to say, guys, here's the vision, here's the mission, here's what we're doing. But as you said, you know, they're a valuable asset because our massage therapists, our trainers, our nutritionists are all selling services that people need at a profit. Yeah. But there has to be an organ organization to that. Yes. Or here's what happens. You know, if they're not aligned with your philosophy, now you have them, you know, trainers that are talking about things that don't align with the chiropractic, yeah. right? So our trainers are, you know, are really well versed in what chiropractic's all about. Same thing with the nutrition, you know. So I don't want individual people calling individual plays. I want me as a chiropractor to be able to say, okay, guys, this is the vision, this is the mission, this is clinically why we do what we do, and here's your role on that team. Mm -hmm. And your role is really important, but don't ever forget this is the overriding mission. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if the massage profit is is worth. Is, is yeah. worth is, is worth the yeah well, we always say it's a value <laughs> add you know what i mean it's a, some a, some i know i love yeah. it so much but god they are they are tough sometimes big you know? time yeah. you know but you know what i found and we just hired a massage therapist nick and you know one of the things that maybe this would be good advice but we always and in the interview i always allow them to massage me or one of my my office manager yeah. or my wife and so that we can kind of get a feel for their hands and i just went through an interview last week and hired a great massage therapist right 
Uh, and, and the reason was because when he massaged me, I'm like, wow, this guy has really confidence in his hands. Yeah. So, you know, you can find them. They're out there. I know yeah, there's sure. a lot of, a lot of ones that are a little bit flaky. Yeah. Um, but there's some, some ones out there. You just, again, you have to kind of indoctrinate them to, to, this is, this is our mission. This is our vision and know that if they're kind of out there and they don't want to be a part of your vision and mission, yeah. then you need to move on and find somebody who's, who's excited to be part of your team. Yeah. And, you know, have to share the why, right? Right. Yeah. So um, the thing I love about eight weeks to wellness, I mean, in the five years that I've been in, I mean, it's just like evolved and evolved and evolved. And you just be, you're such a great leader of, of the tribe. And there's so much, um, you know, support within that. Um, what have been the biggest changes that, that you've made over the last uh, few years that you've seen that have really helped uh, not only like streamline the processes within the practice, but also like to be able to get uh, even better results with, uh, with patients? Um, I would say a couple things. I would say, you know, if we're talking about the practice, well, let's talk about the practice and then we'll talk about eight weeks to wellness. Yeah. You know, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, really being able to on a consistent basis, sit down and train your team. You know, so we have two meetings a week, Nick, we have a weekly CA meeting and then we have a weekly doctors and what we call leadership um, meeting. Yeah. So the leadership meeting is our, our marketing coordinator. Uh, it's our office manager and the doctors. And we get together on Monday and then we have a CA meeting on, on Wednesday. Yeah. And we have, we follow the EOS uh, traction protocol for the way that we do our staff meetings, the level 10 meetings. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important to have clear objectives. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we try to have three to five quarterly objectives that we're working on and everybody knows what those objectives are. So it's not, you know, it, everybody it's, we're very clear with what our objectives are. And yeah. so when, when we get together, it's, what are we doing to you know drive the business in direction where we're meeting those objectives and specifically what is your role to help us meet this objective yeah. so what are you doing to help rock? us yeah exactly yeah. and then you were going to say for eight so weeks to so for eight weeks to wellness because um you know we have you know 60 some centers uh, really around the world now yeah. you know i think the thing is is that you know i i just noticed that the most successful practices because like you said, there's a lot of moving parts with eight weeks to wellness. Yep. So, you know, being a good manager and a good leader, you know, is all about getting people to engage, yep. you know? And so when they're engaged with your meetings, like with eight weeks to wellness, the people that are showing up to the events, the people that get on, on the weekly coaching calls, yep. the people that are getting on individual calls, the people that are reaching out when they're stuck somewhere, yep. you know, and trying to get coaching, you know, it's all about their level of engagement, you know? And the other thing too, is I think personally, it's also about, you know, your confidence in the product. Like, you know, you have to really understand when you sit down with a patient, you know, how to direct them in the right direction to lead them to do eight weeks to wellness. Yeah. And that's kind of a skill. Like when I sit down to go over somebody's labs, you got to know what you're talking about. Right. You know, right. Uh, when I, when I talk to, when I do a functional movement assessment, you got to know what you're looking for. Yeah. So there's got to be a level of competency. And I think with competency, Nick, you get confident. Yeah. So like for me, when I sit down with a new patient, it's really exciting because if they have metabolic syndrome, I know I probably can close them into eight weeks to wellness unless they just totally don't give a shit yes. about themselves. I know that I have the skills to be able to kind of lead them in the conversation and then use objective criteria like our, our wellness score and, and labs and body composition to show them how them getting healthy is gonna have a radical impact on the quality of their life. Because one thing, and I think this is just, for me, it's overriding philosophy that I believe that your health is the, is the foundation to the quality of your life. So if you really wanna have a good quality of life in your relationships you know, and, and your purpose and your mission and wake up with great energy and not be depressed, it all hinges on being healthy. Yep. You know? And so if we can teach our patients that, you know, and get them to engage and recognize they're not going to get that from medicine. Right. You know, what they're going to get from medicine is if they have a crisis, maybe they're going to get help. Right. Right. When they're all right. broken down. Yeah. But, you know, what they get from us is being able to sustain that foundation, you know, that their quality of life rests on, you know, so they have to they have to have that mentor and that that coach in their life. And I, I love when you say, you know, you take you to every relationship you have right you know and i always use that in you know our eight weeks of wellness talks and i think that that really resonates with people um because it's the truth like if you don't have your health and if you know being free of subluxation is awesome but if they don't have the rest of it I, like are they going to be the best version of right. themselves right um and, so, and just you know yeah. while i'm thinking about it like i look at you and what you do and your level like you know 
the people out there don't know you like I know you. Yeah. But I know you're the best of the best of the best of what you do. But I know why you're the best of the best of what you do. And that's because your level of engagement. Like you're meeting with somebody tomorrow, you told me, you know, and, and paying a pretty high price to meet with him right. so that you can kind of glean information that you can then use that to make your tribe better, right. you know? And so like you're you're always at the kind of top of your game. And it's not, you know, it's not because you're wishing it. It's because you're out there and you're learning and you're doing and you're investing, you know, and that's what you have to do. You got to be engaged and you got to go out and find those people. They're going to help coach you to to get those things that you need to to grow your business. I appreciate that. And I totally agree. Um, what uh, like, let's let's say something I, let, I kind of want to give because I feel like there are a lot of chiropractors out there that were in the situation that I was when I found eight weeks of wellness. You know, at the time we had moved from, you know, about, a, I think we had like a 3000 square foot office. We'd moved down to about 1200 and we were really just doing adjustments. Uh, we had a massage therapist at the time, but it was just like they paid, I don't know, she probably had like five to 10 massages a week. We had a decompression table and some e step. And I mean, but it was almost all just soft tissue work from the doctors and adjusting. What would you say to somebody who is kind of in that situation? that wants to do more, that wants to help with the lifestyle, what's, you know, what's the way that they can um, start to either offer more services? Um, I mean, obviously, eight weeks of wellness, I, you know, it's basically that in a box Mm -hmm. um, to where it makes it very simple. But what would you recommend to somebody um, that maybe isn't to that step yet, but is, is, is so can we use a real life case study, a person that, you know, we sure can, um, you know, so Brian Hester is somebody that, you know, who has probably one of the most beautiful offices that I've ever been in, right. Runs eight weeks to wellness. And I've known Brian probably going on, you know, 10 years. And I remember when he first came to me, you know, they, they had a very small office. Um, I think he had one or two employees, you know, they were collecting about two fifty a year. And, you know, and, and they didn't have room for a fitness center. And I was like, listen, Brian, you can't do eight weeks to wellness because the fitness portion of it is crucial and it's, it's done in office. Yeah. You know, it's not like we're handing people sheets, you know, we're really teaching them how to train properly. Yeah. Right. So he said, listen, you know, if, if you'll coach me, you know, and just trust the trust that I'm going to get there, yeah. you know, when it was the very first time I went back and I could just tell from his passion that he wanted this so bad. I'm like, okay, I trust you. You know, and so we started coaching and the very thing he and I always remember he told me this. He said, you know, within three months, I didn't even implement eight weeks to wellness and my practice grew 25 percent. Right. And it was just through being able to do his day one, day two better. He started implementing the wellness score. Right. He started offering services that he could, but he felt better because he was offering longer term care plans because he had the now the objective confidence if you will because he had the wellness score he had a little bit more understanding of how to do a a day one day two to not only you know help them with their pain but now have the discussion about hey nick i see that you're taking a statin tell me about that you know how long have you been on that statin you know has your doctor given you any indication when you can come off that statin you know how do you feel about taking the statin for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. so you know other questions like hey nick you know Tell me some of your health goals, you know, long term, you know, if we can improve anything about your health that you think would have a radical impact on your longevity, yeah. you know, maybe to get you to live better, maybe get you off some of this medication. You know, what are some of the things that you think you need to change or the goals that you have for your health? Like, so having those conversations gave him the confidence to make better recommendations. And eventually he added the fitness center, you know, so I think it's, you know, so many times, Nick, that people want to get started. Um, but they're kind of thinking like, oh, well, you know what, um, is, am I going to be successful with this? Yeah. And I think when you have the confidence, you say, you know what, I'm going to jump in, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I know that this, this coach or this person, because I have belief in them yeah. is going to help me figure it out. And if they've done it right, if they've done it, like, yes. like you're doing it, yeah. you know, then why can't I do it? Yeah. I like if, if it has been done, right. that means it's possible. Exactly. Right now, uh, two things that I wanted to say is, is there any better tool for, and I don't want you to answer this yet because I want to remember to ask the second one, but is there any better tool for day one, day two than the wellness score? And number two, is there anyone who implements harder than Brian Hester? And right. that is, that is a, that is a testament to that 25% growth. It's like, yes, he learned new things, but I bet you he did every single thing that you told him to, because he's just like, Oh, well, if success leaves clues. So right. uh, if, if Dane tells me to do it and he's successful, then I'm going to do it and I'll be successful. Right. And, 
and I, I mean, I've known Brian a long time, and man, that guy, nobody ever hunts like that. Dude. Yeah, well, that's why he's successful. Exactly. Right. right. So he follows. Know. He goes deep. Like it's like he's not. He's not in nine different coaching programs. Right. He's in eight weeks to wellness, and he dominates doing eight weeks to wellness. Right. You know. Right. And I, I think that a lot of times people are always looking for uh, this program or that course or this coach, and like they're hopping from one to the next, looking for something. It's like, man, I, he, whether it's eight weeks to wellness or something right. else, it's like they're all good right it's like you find the one that resonates with you the most and you go deep with it right and you really like get proficient right but, so so to answer your questions right the, yeah. the first question is there any better tool to use in your day one day two other than the wellness score you know we created the wellness score nick because i wanted to be able to take all the objective criteria within four categories of yeah. the person's health their neurospinal health which is what I call their chiropractic health, yep. right? Their biochemical health, which is essentially their lab work, mm -hmm. right? Their general health, which are things like their blood pressure, which is super important, right? Yep. Uh, and then also their um, uh, functional fitness, yep. you know? So looking at their movement patterns, looking at how much muscle they have on their body. And when you look at those four dimensions of a person's health, you have 95% of what you need to know. Yeah. And there's, I, I love this statement, Nick, but once you identify a problem, the solution becomes self-evident, right? Right, But you can't solve a problem you don't know exists. It's it's the best. Like, right. I, it's such an amazing, especially when they do blood work. Right. When they do blood work, it's just, because there's like 50 things there. Each right. one of them gets a grade. Then you get a total grade. At the you just end. look so at the reds. For, for those of you that don't know what, what the wellness score is, uh, uh, Dane developed it. And uh, it's basically a, uh, a report card for those four categories and each, each um, thing that you're measuring gets a grade, a, a number grade and then a letter grade. And then there's a total. And man, when people see the F's right. when people see that red, it's, I mean, it, it's, it, this is these, yeah. you know, what do you, what do you always say? Physiology, like, physiology, never like lies. patients lies, but physio yeah. physiology, physiology never lies, lies, but patients do. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, pa patients bullshit themselves and us all the time. Yes. And sometimes it's, Hey, I'm a lot sicker than what I think I am. Yep. Right. And some people are just the the opposite, you know, as they think, hey, I'm I'm really healthy. Yep. And you look at their wellness score and their physiology and say, Man, you're not healthy. Yep. You know, you're like, you know, a couple steps away from a heart attack. Right. You know, you're heading down the path towards chronic disease or die. By the way, you're pre diabetic. Yep. They don't even know, you know, that they're they're, you know, on this road to a crisis. Yeah. And that, you know, that's where the whole preventative model comes in. Yeah. You know, we're really trying to look at their physiology and say, Hey, listen, let's not wait for the disease. Like, cause you're heading down that path and your physiology, you know, you're in the red in this category and whether it's their blood pressure or their cholesterol or their blood sugar, or their insulin, or, you know, their movement screen or whatever, mm -hmm. it's just so easy to look at their physiology. And say, okay. Here's where the reds are. You know, here's where the challenges are because once you identify the challenge, then you can apply a solution. Yep. So for example, if they're a fan, we do eight functional movement tests, four for core flexibility, four for core strength. And these are basic things that a 70 year old should be able to pass, yep. you know, squatting, lunging, sitting up from a lying position. And so if they're failing that, I know their core's weak. You know, I know their core's tight. Yep. So what's the solution? Yep. Okay, is that an adjustment? No, that's not an adjustment. Let's get their butt in the training room and let's start working on their core, yep. okay? But let's say their posture is off and they have, you know, inch and a half of forward head tilt. Well, now I know that's chiropractic care. You know, that's, they need to be adjusted. They need to start using the general that, you know, so it's easy to apply solutions when you know what the problem is. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about getting the message out because as we didn't talk about the second question, uh, okay. why is Brian so good at implementing? Oh yeah. I yeah. thought we did, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I'll give, just give you my perspective yes. on that. So, you know, in, in doing this and I think about all the chiropractors, Nick, that I've worked with in the past it's, 10 years, it's a lot. It's like a, you, it's a you, lot. You've seen yeah. You've seen the whole spectrum yeah. of chiropractors. And by the way, I launch every single one of the new eight weeks to wellness centers. Yes. So I've been in a lot of chiropractic offices yep. and met their staff and their families and yep. see how they run. And I think that gives me the credibility and the perspective to really answer this question. Yep. But, you know, the people that do the best implement, you know, yep. they don't ask questions. You know, they just implement it because they, they have faith that it's going to work. Yep. You know what I mean? And I also think they're intelligent people, yep. you know. You know, there's a certain amount of intelligence that goes in to say, okay, you know what, this is the way it should be done, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to just do the work and, yes. you know, and not question it. Yep. So I think the implementation, like it's, it's like you said, people bounce from coach to coach or program to program. And it's like, come on, man, just where, where find a coach, you know, that you resonate with, yes. whether it's eight weeks to wellness or You're whether right. it's a, you know, straight chiropractic program, it, do, it doesn't matter what 
what is your vision? What is your mission? Yep. Go out and find the person who's doing it successfully. Yep. And then you know what? Sublimate your own damn ego and just do everything they tell you to do. Yep. The I, I was just talking to Jeff Danielson about this yesterday. We were talking about, I was talking about tastemakers. So my friend Jesse, uh, he is a, I went to college with him and he's a songwriter in Nashville. Or he's trying to be a songwriter. Well, he is a songwriter. Uh, but he has the best taste when it comes to country music. So I don't, I barely listen to the radio anymore. I don't really have time for a lot of the stuff that I used to like really enjoy. So he'll just send me songs. He's like, this is a fire jam. You've got to listen to this, right? Mm -hmm. I do not question. I just assume it is a fire jam. I listen to it and it always is, right? You, you do, I think you do such a good, like you are, um, because you're doing it, because you're always like improving it, it's so easy to follow you as the leader of eight weeks to wellness because it's you're the tastemaker of this model of practice mm -hmm. to where it's like I don't have to question right. whether you've thought it through. Right. Like I know how much you think it through. No doubt. You know what I mean? I mean I listen to so many, you know, in my, you know, just like you geek out on, you know, how to improve people's practice right. through, you know, internet strategies, social media strategies, yeah. right? And to really leverage, which is the name of your business you know, leverage that, you know, right. I think for me, you know, as I geek out on the functional medicine stuff, you oh, know, you love that. And I love it. I yeah. mean, I listen to podcasts because I love understanding human physiology yeah. and how to improve that. So I dare say there's not a chiropractor out there that understands how to apply a functional, you know, I don't want to call it functional medicine because we don't use medicine, but it's a functional wellness approach yeah. into, into a chiropractic practice. But we do use medicine. It's just food and yeah, exercise. Yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. food as medicine, yeah, right? Exactly, or supplements right. as medicine. Exactly. You know, but my point is that we live in, you know, your your patients need this. You know, they want this, they need this, they're yeah. willing to pay you for it. You know, so how do you go about implementing that into your practice? And that's really been my my life's passion, Nick. Yeah. It's like how do we go out and we take the best of chiropractic and the best of chiropractic lifestyle and put them together in a program so we can go out and save lives and have people pay us because you and I have had this conversation, but I believe that people pay for value yep. and they pay in direct proportion to the value they receive. Yep. So the more value you give them, the more they're going to pay you. So if you help them get out of pain, there's value in that, no doubt. And people should pay you. But if you help people get out of pain and you help reduce their cholesterol 50 points and they take 20 pounds off and they're moving better and stronger, yep. you know, and they're not depressed and they're able to get off some of their medication, how much more value are you creating in, in their life? Mm -hmm. They become so sticky in your practice, yeah. but they don't mind paying you out of pocket. Right. Um, oh, shoot. What was it? Uh, when we went back to the, oh, I know what I was going to say. So because, uh, you know, your office name is Wellness Solutions Center. So there's chiropractic is not in the name. Uh, the majority of your clients come in uh, as chiropractic, you know, they have body signals that they're uh, they're coming in for. But how do you uh, how do you recommend to, you know, get the message out of like that you are different than the guy down the road that only addresses subluxation? So I think, you know, in, in you know, obviously you have to go out and, and I always love the the statement, you can't catch fish in a sporting goods store. Right. You know, because the fish aren't there. Right. That's where you buy your rod and your tackle and yep. stuff like that. But eventually you got to take that stuff and go out to where the fish are, which are the lakes and the oceans and streams and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we always have to. And, and you know, uh, the thing I love about leverage is now, you know, we can take our message to market through social media. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I don't have to go out and always do a talk. or I don't have to always go out and do some sort of a screening, which. I had to do when we were first in practice or a yellow page ads or something like that. You know, we can take our message and create this, this, which is exactly what we're doing now yeah. is amplify this message out into our communities through so many of the resources that you teach. Yeah. But the, the key thing comes back to what message do you want? So like, what's my USP? What's going to, what's going to make me radically different than the chiropractor up the road. And again, I think it's the fact that, you know, most chiropractors are trying to uh, attract patients based on pain. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that because right. there's a lot of people out there in pain. I have no problem with that. And I also have no problem when people come into my office in pain. But I think, you know, there's so many things like I showed a slide in my talk yesterday, the top 10 reasons people go seek the help of a, a chiropractor. And the number one reason, I'm sorry, the, the top 10 reasons people go seek the help of a physician. And this is according to the Mayo Clinic, looking at over 50,000 patient records. What was the number one chief complaint? You know what it was? What's that? Skin disorders. Like if I told you the number one reason people go seek the help of a physician is skin disorders, would you believe me? 
you would probably thought it was like the common cold or, or yeah. back pain or yeah. pain or something like that and skin disorders, yeah. right? And how many people are going out to see a chiropractor because they have skin disorders? But do you know how many people skin disorder like eczema, uh, you know, have cleared up yeah. because we helped them clean their guts up yeah. and we started adjusting them and changed yeah. their diet? So why aren't more people going to seek the help of a chiropractor because they have skin disorders because we can help them? And how about other things on the list like anxiety and depression? You know, how about other things on the list like cholesterol problems? Yeah. How about other things on that top 10 list like diabetes? You know, all those things, Nick, I feel so confident in helping patients with because I know it's just a physiological problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the problem and is because that, you've, you've helped a lot of people. Oh, with absolutely. Those problems. Yeah. But the, here's the problem. People out there don't see me as somebody that can help that with that yeah. unless I go out there and show them that we can help with these issues. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think the key is, is that you've got to figure out what your USP is. And my USP is I want to go out and teach people that through lifestyle, you know, you can mitigate a lot of these chronic diseases and get off of these medications if you're willing to change your lifestyle. Yeah. You, so you were one of uh, Leverage's original clients and still are. And um, no one, none of our clients have gone from really like creating no content to diving in as hard as you have not only just in for your office, but for eight weeks of wellness. I mean, you have just like really resonated with the whole like content marketing idea. And the thing I love about eight weeks of wellness is it opens up a million different oh topics. Like yeah. if all you do is address subluxations, you are going to talk about the same things a lot. Yeah. And you know, whether it's, whether it's the stuff that you're creating for the office or just through your personal page, I just see you like really, understanding the nuances of content marketing a lot uh, yeah. since we've been working together. And it's, it's, it's always fun to see because there's just, there's so much to talk about. Well, that's, I mean, just in talking with you, like Nick, Nick and I get together and this is why the power of mentorship and the power of masterminds, yeah. but just in getting together, like we're sitting here talking, right. And I'm thinking about this slide that I showed yesterday, the top 10 reasons. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking, you know what we, Nick and I need to do a segment on each one of these right. top 10 reasons yeah. Because if everybody who has skin disorders, we can get out and reach them and say, wow, you know, you could possibly get off this biologic or get off this medication. Yeah. Or if everybody with cholesterol problem that's taking a statin knows that you could reduce your cholesterol 50 to 80 points and get off your statin. You know, if everybody who is, has anxiety and depression knows that, guess what? You know, you don't have to be on this antidepressant for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, if we get those messages out there, think about, you know, how many more new patients we could be getting. Right. I, the, People in our communities barely know the top 10 reasons people visit a chiropractor, right. let alone the top 10 reasons, uh, you know, why they go to a PCP right. and that chiropractor can help. I mean, there are, there are people that I could probably hit their house with a rock from my office that don't know that we help migraines. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So right. they definitely don't know about the skin disorder part yeah. of it. Well, you know? you know, the thing I shared yesterday, Nick, which is really interesting, and those top 10 reasons, back pain is the third a leading reason why people go seek the help is of that physician. how you do number three that's how i do number three it, I, 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 it's really <laughs> weird but that's how I'm always, how do you do I'm number three this i think <laughs> i can't do that i think sometimes i can't i can't do that i feel so off <laughs> this this finger won't go up okay i can do this right and i can do this but i can't do that okay i don't know it's just a problem i've never seen that right? before that's good so so number three is back pain yeah right well, do you know that more people go seek the help of a physician? If I have lower back pain, okay, yeah. in a two to one ratio, two people for every one person that goes sees a chiropractor, two of them are going to the medical doctor for back pain. Right. And we know that most of the time it's a mechanical problem. They're right. subluxated, right? What are they going to get at the medical doctor? They're going to get opioids or painkillers or anti inflammatory or surgery. Or surgery, right. right? And so even in the thing that I think we have the most brand perception and recognition in the marketplace for, we're not dominating that marketplace. Yeah. You know, and the you know, one thing we should be known the, for the one thing, the one thing, yeah, right. So it's like, you know, how do we, how do we change that? You know, and I think, you know, we have to go out there and have these strategies and we have to say, okay, you know, in our community, yeah. this is what I'm going to be known for. Yeah. And I'm not only going to be known for it through marketing, but I'm going to deliver on the promise. And as I deliver on promise, you know, I can use those testimonials to say, say, listen, this isn't like a patient saying I have no longer have lower back pain. Look at this wellness score. You know, their cholesterol dropped 80 points. Yeah. Their A1C came down from, you know, 6.5, which is diabetic, down to 5.5, which is normal, you know. And when people so, see that stuff, they want to know what theirs is. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, the only, whether it's, whether it's going, because you used to do a lot of boots on the ground stuff when you first started, you know, uh, dinner talks and spinal screenings and, you know, 
uh, lunch and learns. You do a lot of corporate presentations and, um, you know, content marketing, whether it's through boots on the ground, like in person, talking to someone face to face, or whether it's through videos, social media, YouTube, whatever it might be, those that it's all getting that message out there. And imagine if we, and that's, you know, that's really the, the mission of, of leverage is to help more chiropractors get the message of whatever their office wants to be spreading. Cause all of us are, have the right information. We're doing the right, whether you're an eight weeks wellness office or just addressing subluxation, ju they just don't know. The reason why two to one go to medical doctors over chiropractors is because people just don't know. Right. You know, right. and that's what I just, I wish that more people embraced content the way that you have, because I've just, you know, we've talked a lot about like how much your, your practice has grown all because you're just shining the light on what it is that you do right. instead of them having to wait for you to get into their corporation or see you talk right. at, a, at a dinner. Right. Now it's like, it's just in their feet. And and it's easy for people, Nick, you know, like yeah. in, a, in, a, in an era where people are so time starved. Yeah. Right. There can't you be know, friction. being able to, you know, which is what people are on every single day, be able to, Oh, Dr. Dane, you know, my friend told me about him. Let me click on this video, yeah. you know, and you know how many people, you know, and I, I've told my staff this the past year, I'm like, guys, it's probably like one of our number one things now that, you know, is for new patients. They come in and they say, hey, yeah, we, we saw you online. We were, we were all saying, hey, Nick, who referred you to the practice? It used to be, oh, you know, um, you know, Bob, you know, I work with Bob Smith. Da, yeah. da, da, da. Now it's, you know, I, I, they come in and, hey, who referred you to the practice? I saw you online or I got you, read your reviews online. And yeah. probably it was a piece of content that drew them to our website yeah. and they jumped on or they Googled us and they read our reviews. But we're getting so much more traffic of people coming in because you know they're they're seeing something online that we did that drives them to our website or our reviews and like wow that looks like a pretty cool practice and that's why that all works together you know if you can get the awareness to the reviews or get the awareness to your website if you have no reviews or if you have a terrible website you're going to lose it but when all that stuff works together that's where the magic really happens and you've been doing it long enough now i mean we started in uh 17 so you know we're almost three years into it. Mm -hmm. And this was the time in my practice where, cause we had started doing content a couple of years before we started leverage, but um, that two, three, four year mark is where I feel like it starts the hockey stick. And I just don't think people stick with it enough. And it's because they don't really like it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you really like it. Like you're like a fish to water with content because you have so much to share um, and you're a good presenter. A lot of people don't like it. And um, they aren't patient enough to wait for that for that hockey stick moment. Mm -hmm. But man, if you could, you're you're only trying to dominate five to seven miles around your practice. Absolutely, there's only X amount of people. Most people are dealing with an audience of about a hundred thousand, which almost every city, fifty percent of the total population. So if you're dealing with a hundred thousand people, fifty percent of them are going to be between the ages of twenty five and sixty five, which is who you're going to want to target on social. So if you're only trying to get in front of 50,000 people, you know, it might take you a while. Like, I don't know, it takes like 22 touches now to, right. to, to get somebody to like, even like pay attention. Right. If you're just, if you're creating videos for two weeks or you wrote that blog post that one time, sure. I don't know if it's going to move the needle that much. And I think you've got to really, um, uh, you know, dive into it just because I, I think you do such a good job of it. What has been in terms of content creation, what's been the, um, the thing that's really helped you grow because you've gotten so much better at it. So I, first of all, I, you, I love content, right? So yeah. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I live 45 minutes from my office. Yeah. So it gives me time to listen to a lot of podcasts that I like to listen to, which spur on a lot of ideas for me for content. So every single month I'm doing a blog. If you go to my website and click on, like a lot of times you go to somebody's website, you click on their blog yeah. and it's from like two years ago, yeah. the last, the latest blog, yeah. right? If you go to my website, you're going to see at least one blog every single month that's going to be kind of in depth, and which is what we recommend just real quick. We recommend once a month because that's about how often um, uh, Google crawls your website. So even if you write four blogs at once, it's better to trickle them out over once a month than to do like post four in four days. Right. Cause Google won't see it. It'll see like, it'll see it kind of all as like new trap or like new content, but then for the next four months, there's nothing. So right. it's better to have it seasoned out. So yeah, and, yeah. And so a tip on that. We, the blog that we create, yep. we print it up. We always make it less than a page. So it could be, you know, more than a page, but it's one page, yep. two-sided, yep. right? 
And we print that up in our office. We put our, our website and our phone number on there, and we give it to every patient that comes in that month. Oh, did you get the blog this month? It's on our website. Oh, if, you know, if let's say we're talking about metabolic syndrome yep. and diabetes, right? And that's the that's the content we're creating. Yep. All about metabolic syndrome, blood sugar, diabetes, insulin, whatever. Yep. You know, I may say, you know what? There's so many people, Nick. I'm I'm getting you know done adjusting you, Nick. There's so many people with metabolic syndrome. You know, clinical obesity, diabetes, and you may know some of these people. And if you do, this would be a, a life changing, life saving piece of information to get to them, and they can get to it through our block on our website, or you can just give them this, yep. right? That, that to me, like if you're doing that with every patient every single month, I mean, that's yeah. that's an absolute home run. And everybody knows, even if it's not the thing that they're dealing with, everybody knows somebody that's somebody. dealing with most of these things. Absolutely. And, they're, uh, and that's a great way to like marry the offline and the online, mm. which I think you do a good job of. Because it's like right. you're promoting it. Like when people think of blogs, it's like they, they're usually thinking of it as, oh, you know, I want to increase my SEO. But, you know, you can take it into your office. You know, it's like... You, Bringing the offline and the online together is it just, it's so powerful. Yeah. And then the content. So you were talking about, it has to be automated. So that was the one thing I loved about leverage is like you were asking me, I knew that you were going to be asking me for my content yeah. on a specific day. Yeah. So I knew I needed to get my butt in gear and, and I'm blessed because I have Brad, my, my video guy is, yeah. you know, we barter. He, he doesn't charge me anything. He does all of our videos top notch. So I knew I had to get to his studio, yep. you know, video the content, get it to you so that you could edit, mm -hmm. you know? So I think having a deadline, Nick, is really, right. and without somebody like a leverage, you don't have a deadline. Right. So you're like, oh, I'll do it There next is week. no deadlines in yeah. marketing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know how much content that I created before leverage? Like, none, right. you know what I mean? So now, like every single month, I, I still did my article of the week, but I didn't turn that into video clips that I could send out, yeah. you know, through Facebook ads or just send out, you know, through, you know, social yeah. media, through Facebook, things like that. Now it's like every single month, I'm like, all right, what's the theme of the month? You know, what what videos are we going to create from this? You know, yeah. and there's just, if, if chiropractors out there would just say, hey, what 50 things do I want my patients to know about? Yeah. Right. Because, you know, like you recommend one to two minutes, people are going to turn off after, after that. But if you had 50 things that you wanted to share, I don't care what it is, nutrition, subluxation, yeah. whatever resonates with your heart, and you went out and you created content for a minute or two. And if you can't talk for a minute or two on subluxation, you know, you, you've got big it's problems. Problem, you right, know what I mean? Right. And people say, well, I'm not good on camera. And did it. Well, neither was I. You know, right. I remember doing my first healthcare class when I got, and I literally peed in my pants. <laughs> I went to go out and I like literally, I don't know how it was a sympathetic, spontaneous. <laughs> I, I like just had a little pee and I looked down and like there's a big stain on my thing. And I not totally like released, like wet my pants, but I, I peed, right? And I had this wet spot and I had to pull my shirt out. And I was had like five people in the waiting room. I had to pull my shirt out. And back then, nobody tucked their, you know, pulled their shirt out, right? right. So yeah. I looked like an idiot because yeah. it was like, why is this guy's shirt out? It was out because I wet why myself. I, that's why right? I, I, I was yeah. so nervous about this one. I yeah. had to pull my shirt out. So like I went from somebody who like yesterday would go out and speak to five. 500 people and I have to be honest I wasn't nervous at all because this isn't about us right there's people dying in your community every day because yep. they're not in your office yep. and I know that's a cliche thing to say Nick but it's it's true, true. It's it true. is so true and and so like if you can't get over this you know what I mean because the if you can't if you can't speak and communicate and get this message out you know you're going to struggle in practice it's like one of those critical things You've got to get over and learn how to in do In life, you've yeah. got to communicate. Right. You know, you've got to create value in, in people's lives. And I tell anybody that is struggling with content, the 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 number one, two through a hundred reason is that it may, you're making it about you and not about right. your community. Absolutely. Because as soon as you make it about somebody else, then it's just like, okay, how do I go? You figure it out. But when you're like, oh, I don't like the way my voice sounds. Right. Oh, I don't like the way I, I look fat on camera. Right. I don't know what to say. Right. Right. I don't know how to edit. I don't know what to do with it. Like all of a sudden, like you're you're just finding excuses to not do it. When you make it about somebody else, when you truly are trying to serve, that's when it becomes uh, a, a thousand times easier because you're you're just trying to provide value that you got inside of you. Because I, I always feel like when you're creating content, it's like there's like this stuff inside of the, you're just like dying to get out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, cause you can kind of tell when, when people are, are enjoying it and when they're, when they're right. not. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, housekeeping just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Invite him in, man. Yeah. Figure out, does she know anything about content marketing? Ask her if she can. <laughs> 
Um, all right, let me see if there's anything else. Um, so we're going to talk on another interview about eight weeks to wellness and, and what it is that you do for doctors and about that program. And just, I mean, I, I, I feel like I do a good job of like saying this to you every once in a while, but my practice would not be where it's at without you. My life wouldn't be where it's, where it's at without you. Uh, you've been such a huge uh, supporter of leverage and I just such a great friend. So I appreciate yeah. you being on. Oh, board. Absolutely, Nick. And I, I likewise, but it's just like, you know, we have such a great profession and, and what we have to do is stick together and get people on our team. You know, I knew nothing about content marketing, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, so it, but it's, it's something that obviously has been a huge, it's been a huge thing in our practice to really be able to attract new patients. And it's been fun too, you yeah. know? So to have people like you on our team that I'm like, wow, you know, this is the guy who's going to teach me how to do this properly, you know, and, and going to make sure that I do it. It's, yeah. it's been huge for our practice and huge for eight weeks to wellness. we got to get the content out there. Absolutely. All right, guys, uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, Dan. No worries. Appreciate it. Just because this episode is over doesn't mean you can't continue your path to a million dollar practice. We've created Chiropractic's most full service marketing agency at Leverage Media to help you reach $1 million a year fast and continue to grow. You can get a free strategy session with me absolutely free right now. To get started, go to GetMeMoreNewPatients.com. Once again, go to GetMeMoreNewPatients.com and we'll see you tomorrow on the Path to a Million podcast.